Hey, this is Mark Trafford from the Networking Group. If you're wanting to learn how to embrace change and navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, Dennis Giannoutsis. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding their balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today, and if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey, listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world, and I want to welcome you to the show. And uh, I want to ask you, if you haven't already checked out the Facebook group, Leadership is Changing, go ahead and do that. We'd love to see you over there in that group. And if you're on LinkedIn, there is a page called Leadership is Changing, feel free to join us on that page. Hey, listeners, I have a guest today, and his name is Mark Trafford. He is a self-confessed entrepreneur who currently owns two businesses uh, in the property sector and also the TNG, the network group that facilitates networking meetings for business uh, owners. After 25 years fighting the corporate ladder in several high-level positions, both in New Zealand and the United Kingdom, Mark decided to take on the world himself in 2007 and start his business. Now, with 11 franchises, his property brand is becoming a well-recognized name in New Zealand, and Mark's true passion lies in business and being an ideas man. He surrounds himself with clever individuals that strengthen his teams and enable him to focus on what he enjoys and is good at. Mark is an author and an avid All Blacks fan and father of five teenagers and lives with his partner, Melanie, on a rural property north of Auckland. Hey, Mark, welcome to today's show. Morning, Dennis. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Great. Great to have you here. Hey, so I've given a quick introduction on you and around your background. Is there anything else that you might want to share about your background? Oh, look, I grew up in a, in a large family. And when I say large, I'm 12 of 13 children. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but we had a lot of fun, I guess. And, and I think I knew quite early that I was a, a, a leader or I was different. And, and I also realized that, that, you know, everybody had a personality type. And you know, we would, we would play games. You imagine we could put a cricket team together or a couple of rugby teams or a football game pretty much on our own as a family. And I would be the one as the second youngest that would organise everything. And, and, you know, I would make the rules up or change the rules or become the referee. And I think we're born as leaders and, and then we learn to adapt. But, you know, I had a lot of fun as a child and I, and I had a great upbringing. And I think that I left school when I was 15. I didn't have the opportunity of a of a university education, and and that was all good. I mean, I, I I've never gone back and tried to do that. But what I did learn at school was a little bit about business. And my first business, and some people probably won't like this, was my older brothers would buy cartons of cigarettes, and I would break them down and sell them individually. So I knew at that stage that I was an entrepreneur, and that I could get people to buy from me, and that if I created opportunities, people would follow me. And so my brothers did very well out of my little first business, and I did well as well. Excellent. Well, well done. And so when you say born as leaders, but then we learn to adapt, what, what are some things that some leaders, you know, uh, who are leaders, or even others who say, well, I don't think I was born as a leader, what would you say to them? What would you say to people to help them learn to adapt? What would they do? I would say that we all have some leadership qualities, but some of us know inherently from a very early age that we are born to lead and that others will follow. What I would say to other people who are learning how to lead people is that they need to be confident and, and, and you know, public speaking is a very important part of that, being able to orate or portray the message of being confident that people will follow you. Leadership is about belief, belief in the person that you are following. 
And it's really important for you if you're learning to be a leader to, you know, to research into what a good leader is and, and what those qualities are. And for me, those are, are having self-belief, being confident, you know, not being afraid to fail. Mm. And, and, you know, it's all about the tribe. Have a tribe, people that will follow you. Yeah, and, and it's quite interesting about the not uh, afraid to fail because I think a lot of people don't go and do things in life because they do fear that failure or not succeeding and they always want it to be perfect and I don't think it will ever be perfect for them. And so, yeah, not afraid to fail, I think it's a big one there for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And so you said the, at a young age at school and that you could see yourself with, with different sporting things that you did and arrangements and you're sort of leading. And then I could see you know, from your introduction, you're in some corporate roles in that corporate ladder, some several high level positions, both in New Zealand and the UK. So how did you get into leadership? So when I left school at 15, I was labouring for a while. I was quite happy just to be out of school, I guess, and, and not being told what to do. That was the other problem I had with school is everybody wanted to tell me what to do. And as a leader, you find that a little bit frustrating at times, even when you're 15 and probably more so as a teenager with five of them now, none of them want to be told what to do. But I, I was lucky enough to join a company as, as a storeman and, and quickly became a, a sales rep for them and then became a branch manager for them when I just turned 20. And they were a New Zealand-wide company owned by a, a, a French parent company. And so there was a lot of opportunity in that business. And I spent a fair amount of years with that company just working my way up the what I call the, the corporate leadership channels doing what you need to do. And and then when I decided it was time to, to go overseas, I, when I went to the UK, I was fortunate again to, to join a company that was actually going to be my employer, it turned out, for 11 years. So I spent 11 years with the same company in the UK. And that was in the electrical distribution field. I guess what the UK taught me really about leadership was that you needed to play at your best all the time. You couldn't have a bad day consistently that it would catch up with you. Whereas in New Zealand, we're a little bit laid back as a whole. In the UK, there were very little opportunities for error if you wanted to continue your leadership journey to that next level. Right. So fundamentally, two companies gave me a very long stint in, in the corporate world, and I ended up with way too many staff. And, and was finding it just a, a huge challenge. I mean, some of the things I learned in that corporate world was that I learned how to make money, make a lot of money, make a lot of money for the company who in turn that made a lot of money for me. And so to do that, I had to become a leader at that stage that ran a very profitable business, which meant making some really tough calls around staff, expenses, and I essentially became a hatchet man, I guess, which is not a great thing for a leader to be because we can be quite ruthless yep. in pursuit of what we want to achieve. And so it taught me that to play at those sorts of levels that you really can't be too personable with any of your staff, that you have to lead by example and that you really have to drive your business. And so I, I you know, a lot of the traits as a leader that I was learning were ruthlessness, money at all costs, all those sorts of things. And and I was in my 20s and 30s, and that was actually okay for me then. I enjoyed that, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Okay, good points. And so, yeah, sometimes we do need to make those tough calls. We have those tough discussions decisions or discussions and that. And I think the important thing is that you do do it in the sense a lot of leaders don't make decisions. Uh, they sit back and they, they don't actually want, want to do it. And I think it's really important they do make decisions and then get on with it. It may not be the right decision. It may not be the right answer or the right thing. But, you know, you can at least adapt from it once you've made a decision and, and move forward, which I think is really key. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. So the question I've got you for you here now is, now this person could be alive or from history. So who's your favorite leader and why? Winston Churchill. Uh-huh. Okay, and why? Winston, Winston Churchill. I mean, I have a I have a lot of heroes, but Winston Churchill is my favourite leader. 
if you talk about heroes, which are a little bit different, I would talk about the Nelson Mandela's of this world. And But as an absolute leader, Winston Churchill, I mean, no one turned failure to better use than Winston Churchill. You know, everybody knows what happened when he was the first Lord of the Admiralty, the disastrous attack that he that he planned and failed so badly at Gallipoli. He resigned and then went to the, to basically volunteered to go to the front in France and fight. So he was prepared to go right to the very front to, to make amends. And then when he was, um, when he re-entered politics, you know, the rest is history. Then we hear all the good things and the, and the awesome things about the leader that he was. But, you know, I think the most important thing about Winston Churchill is, is that he could speak so profoundly. We all know the speech about, you know, we will fight on the beaches and da 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 da. You know, I don't have to repeat that. But he spoke and people listened and people followed. And he had the belief of the people. And if anybody got in his way, then he just moved them to the left or the right and carried on. And without Winston, we could be sitting in a very different world. Yep. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great. Yeah, it's a wonderful choice. I mean, I think um, of all the episodes, I think his name's probably come up twice, maybe three times at the most. But it's it's a great it's a great uh, choice there as well. And um, so this program, this podcast, is called Leadership Is Changing. With that title, when I mention that title, what does that mean for you? What it means for me, I think, is is that as leaders, we are changing, which in turn means that leadership is changing overall. And it means that we're all having to, I guess, look inwards and particularly in the environment we're in now, look inwards about how we lead. So how I lead now has changed significantly since how I would lead in the corporate world. I like the franchising or the licensing model because my teams have a a monetary and a business interest vested with me. It's a reciprocal agreement I like to term it as. So as a leader, what I'm doing now is I'm 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 yes, I'm leading a brand or actually two brands, but I'm encouraging and I'm mentoring and I'm using my extensive leadership and corporate knowledge to help SMEs to lead their businesses in turn. So for me, leadership is changing at the moment. It was changing anyway for me personally, but it's changing. I think that if you are not technologically moving forward with your business, I mean, podcast, Zoom, it doesn't matter what that is. When we went into our first lockdown in New Zealand, we completely changed the way that our clients and all of our owners interacted as teams. So leadership is about creating more opportunities to interact with each other at a better level and then do that with your clients as well. Make it easier for your clients. Show them what you can do in that leadership. So for me, it's about making sure that I've got the right people around me. You know, my strength is is ideas. People follow my ideas. Some of them are crazy. Some of them have cost money, (laughs) to be honest with you. Yeah. But they follow ideas and what I'm trying to create, particularly with the networking group and putting business owners in a room, is I'm trying to create a tribe of people that believe that helping each other in business is the right thing to do. So I'm wanting to lead a tribe of people who genuinely want to help each other be better in business. And that's what leadership for me means now. But actually, you have to get with the times. You know, if you're not constantly improving everything in your business, you you know, your software, we've updated all our software and all of our businesses, then you're not leading. You have to be leading by example. For me, get the having the best team around me, all of the people that do the things well that I don't do in this modern world. So we now have full-time IT people that we didn't have before. We have to make sure we are the best leaders by having the best people around us. What I also ask from my people now and what came out of of COVID in that particular couple of lockdowns in New Zealand was I've asked them to step up to the next level. 
step up to the next level and be comfortable in leading what you do. So if you're our IT guru, then you lead. You lead that. If you're our sales and marketing team within our brands, then you lead that. I don't lead that. You lead that. I know nothing about IT. You lead that. So it's about getting them to lead their part of the business. And I think that's where leadership needs to change. If you are not empowering your people and your teams, you're, you're not going to survive in this world. Yeah, I love it, Mark. And I and, and listeners, you know, Mark Trappett here is sharing some beautiful wisdoms and uh, insights here in, in relation to around leadership is changing. And, you know, leaders need to get up uh, with the times are fantastic and being the best leaders by having the best people around you. And then he's enabling people to step up to the next level and lead and leave those, lead those different areas, which is uh, fantastic. So, yeah, I, I love it, Mark. Hey, tell me, so your business and industry, you've sort of just tapped into it just before a little bit, but your business and industry, how, how's, how has your business or industry changed and what sort of impact has that had or demands had that on you and your team? So we've, I'm involved in two business sectors. I'm involved in the, the property or the renovation sector of the market in New Zealand, and that's where my franchising business model is and for us again what's happened means that people aren't able to travel internationally so they're spending a lot of money domestically so it's a bit of a flip of the coin we're on a really good side of that where people are spending a lot of money on their houses on their properties and so we've got more business that we can cope with we've, we've you know business is booming yeah absolutely booming and so what that means is there's pressure on the owners to deliver, to go to the next level. So that's that business is doing very, very well. The other business is, is the networking group, which, which, which is really where my passion lies in, in around working with business owners. And what we've seen there is we've seen a significant amount of people go out of business because there's no travel. Uh, hospitality has gone down to less than 10% of what it was 18 months ago. So we've seen a lot of people exit exit the business market, but we've seen a lot of people come into the market with in, as SMEs with new ideas or they've adapted or changed. So we've got lots of, not necessarily young, we've got a lot of older leaders. And by older, I mean, you know, perhaps my age or even older, or people who don't have a job anymore, who, who've had a business idea for 30 years even, who now have decided to give that a go. And that's very exciting because what we're seeing now is a whole raft of new people at all levels becoming entrepreneurs and, and starting businesses. And so that business is doing very well as well. What we've got to be careful of is, is those people stay in business for a very long time and can lead. Yep. Yeah. No, that's great. That's that's really good. And and you know, I think here is the fact that well, actually I actually get to work with a lot of people from the corporate world who have been, as you said, been wanting to do a business for a while. They haven't done it. And as a result of the pandemic and, and other things, downsizing, companies have pushed them out. And now all of a sudden they're having to think about things and having to do something. And now they're starting these businesses and I'm helping them do that, which is great. And I like what you say here, because there are some businesses that are booming and there are others that are suffering and not doing well. And then so it's about how they can actually adjust and, and move with that. And that's that's really what's important. I think there's some people who have got uh, their egos probably being hurt in the sense that they want their business to still do well, well, but it's no longer there. And if they don't adjust, as my introduction says, if leaders don't change quick enough, they become irrelevant and be left behind. And I think that's really important that they come to that realization quickly and then do something about it and uh, be able to adjust it. Exactly. So I don't like the word pivot because it's mm. been used a lot. It's oh, almost yeah. been thrashed. So I like adaptable because if you can adapt your business just slightly and lead it in another direction, it can be extremely successful. And I've seen so many people just do small changes to a business or add or take out and their businesses are skyrocketing in, in all levels. Yep. And, you know, it is the ability to, to act quickly, Dennis, and to make a decision. And if it's wrong, then, you know, Adapt. okay, I'm a leader, I make mistakes. Let's move on. 
Yep. And I think I was, uh, I, I agree, Mark, that word pivot, I always go and go, that word pivot, <laughs> it happens a lot. But I think the word adapt is great. And I, even just the word to tweak things and just adjust a little bit is, is fantastic, as you said. And, and then you're right. I mean, making the decision is really important and being deliberate about it and doing it. And if it's wrong, then tweak again. But if we don't get the failures other way, then we're never going to never gonna move forward at all which is really important. Hey, if there was one thing you could change in business as a leader today, what, what would it be? From a, a new business point of view, these people that are going into business in New Zealand, I'd like to see them have a lot more help and support and, and availability, to. The, and I know that they can, can join the podcast, but I'd like to see them have support across everything they do for the first couple of years in business. I mean, we have such a high failure rate of businesses and it's not because these people aren't smart or intelligent or hardworking. I see people that are working 90, 100 hours a week in business quite regularly. You know, they've got no life. They've got no family life. They don't look after their health. I'd like to see these people supported and and, and actually shown how to to lead a business and to run a business. Mm. And I think that, you know, that needs to come from from probably government-led. And, and But what I'd like to see really happen is some support for them where they can get to the point where their business is able to push on and really be successful and they can really lead because that's good for them, that's good for them as leaders, that's good for them as business owners. But it's also really good for our economy, for everybody who starts a business and generates money. Yeah. So what I'd like to see is some really good support for these guys. Yeah, awesome. And girls. Yeah, I agree. And I think the support would be wonderful. I mean, uh, for a lot of people, if it's just, I mean, here's one example, uh, Mark, whereby just for them, because as you said, 90 hour, 100 hour weeks, and there's a, People say to me, what's your ideal client or avatar? And it's a guy called David. He was in the UK. I was coaching him, 38 years of age, two kids, 80 plus hour weeks. He was too scared to either start his own business or even take his boss's position because he goes, I'm already doing 80 hour weeks. So if I go to a bigger role, how am I going to cope? I'm not going to be able to do it. And it wasn't that. It was about him having the skills and the capability to understand how to handle it. But more importantly, was to take time out to think and strategize and then do stuff. And um, if we can support people doing that, for sure, that would be awesome to be able to help them and set them up for success even more so. The biggest mistake I think I see in smaller businesses is the owners working in the business, not on it. No time, as you see, Dennis, yeah. in the business. Yeah. You know, they're so immersed, they're working so hard, and they just spend no time even planning or visualizing or – there's no leadership or, or or business ownership if you're just working as an employee in your business. Yeah, too right. And uh, they do get stuck in the weeds. And it's about lifting up and and being able to work on the business for sure, on the business and on themselves. And I think that's that because goes back to what you're saying about their health gets <laughs> impacted in all sorts of different areas as well. Mark, you and I have been employees. Uh, we've uh, we're business owners and that now, but we also have employees and so forth. How has employees' expectations of leaders changed? Well, we all know the younger generation are a little bit more fickle. They're less likely to stay in an environment where the job isn't stimulating, where they're not happy, where they don't feel valued. And, you know, as a, as a not a young business owner, I suppose, it's, you know, you have to have a good mix in your team of youth and experience but you've got to be able to manage their expectations and the younger generation's expectation pretty much is that they will be happy, they'll get what they want, they'll get the money that they want. What you've really, what you've really got to find out from them is, is, is what is it they actually want, what makes them happy. So their expectation, but actually what makes them happy. So we've got some great young franchise owners but it's going back to asking them what makes them happy. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to own a business? Yeah. Why do you want to lead, you know, 250 contractors? And, you know, why, the why? Why do you want to do this? But you, you absolutely, the younger generation are completely different. Everybody else wants to be, or everybody wants to be led. Everybody wants to come to work and respect their boss. They want to respect the owner of the company but they want to feel valued and they want 
they have options. They can go and start a business tomorrow. They can do their own thing. They have options. And your team don't need to love each other. They just need to get on and do a good job together and work together. And so it's getting that 21-year-old graduate to work with the 62-year-old who, who's your financial controller. That, that to me is the key. Having them, making sure that they are valued. They have to feel valued. The biggest thing that I hear when I talk to my staff is I need to be valued. If I don't feel valued, I won't stay in my job. And so to make people feel valued, or um, maybe there's even another way too, Mark, because I think the way they feel valued is that they feel like they're being heard or and they're being allowed to contribute and things like that. And so I think it's a, it's a perfect way of what you just said there about people being valued. And if we can get those different intergenerations working together, and when you do see it happen, it's magic. It's, it's amazing to see what things can, can happen and where an organization can go. So I think it's, it's, it's a really cool thing. Hey, um, what makes a leader successful today in a fast-paced, ever-changing world? Dreams. Yep. And that dreams. would be the same. You've got to have, you've got to have dreams. And, and Mark, would, would, so that's all good. Sorry, I'm, I was going to say to you, when you say dreams, would it also go back to what you just said before about the why? Is yeah. that related to? Absolutely. Why are you doing this? Why am I here? Why am I still working all these hours? Why, 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 why? You know, but as <laughs> what makes us successful, we have to be driven. It doesn't matter whether you're 18 and it's your first business and, you, you know, you're going to go off and do whatever, or whether you're 53 and it's, and it's your fifth business and, you know, some of those have failed. You, you have to be driven. You have to be focused. We've talked about adaptability. That's we, we won't survive in what is now our modern world unless we're adaptable. That, that's an absolute given. We need to deal with anything and everything head on. So, you know, we've just had the big, or we're having the biggest crisis the world has seen for a very long time, if not ever, and we need to deal with it. We cannot be seen to not be leading and driving our teams we can't be hiding, we can't be seen to be hiding, and we need to be seen to be making decisions. That decision, as you said before, Dennis, doesn't need to be the right one. It needs to be a decision and then make another one if we need to change. We need to act quickly once we make those decisions. The one that I struggle with, and I, and I laughed at, at your post the other day, is we need to be calm. You know, and that's very difficult for me mm. to be calm. But I need to be able to portray that everything is fine, we're going in the right direction, I need to be calm. And that's very, I, I actually have to walk away, walk outside, come back, and then respond sometimes to what's going on. And and that's that's a learning for me over 30 years. And I'm still learning, you know. There's no point in throwing your toys out of the pram and all those things. The people that you're leading don't want that. They just don't want that. But I think the most important thing is, is as a leader, you've got constant improvement. Each of your team members needs to be looking at how they can improve both the businesses and themselves. And overall, I mean, I've got way smarter people working for me than I'll ever be, and I love it. I love it. I can't understand what they're saying sometimes because it's so technical, but I love it, yeah. and it works. And if they have an idea... We try it. But I think the most important thing is to stay focused. You know, if you're having a bad day, I call it go sit on a hill. Take the time off. Take the afternoon. Go sit on a hill. Reflect on the why. We've talked about the why. Why am I doing this? Do I still want to do this? I had a, a, a why moment before Christmas, and I, and, I, and I put a call into an old friend of mine who said, Mark, I'll, 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 he's in South Africa, and I said, and I said you know, I don't know what the why is. And so we spent about an hour and I refigured out what the why was, why I'm doing this, why I'm leading these people. Why, why is my life, because my life is my business and my businesses are my life. That's the most important thing for me. I think the other thing about being a leader is not everyone's going to like you. Yep. Nope. 
Nope, not at all. And uh, you're not there to be liked. Uh, I think you're there to to do what you need to do. But also, as you said, the respect thing I think is really important for people. They want to they want to have they want to respect the bosses and that because no one comes to work to to do a bad job. They just go in there, but they want to be able to be at the best. And I think you know, going back to the comment about the stay calm, and it's it's easy to say, but not easy to do. And I think um, what you said as well before about going outside and coming back, it's really you going out taking some deep breaths and coming back in and staying calm is really important because I find that those who take deep breaths slow things down a bit and the All Blacks do it, right? They do it after a team scored against them. They're behind the goalposts. They take two big, big, deep, um, deep breaths right now, slow things down and they go out because now the person who's the calmest is the one that's in control. And so they go back out and they yeah. take control again. And, and you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to do though. And it does take practice. It, uh, there's something to learn at. I guess the other thing as leaders is it's, it's very stressful. You know, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of pressure. People are looking to you all the time. You know, they're looking for answers. They've actually got the answers most of the time, but they're looking for answers from you. It's very stressful. Everybody wants your time. And then when you go home at night, your family wants your time. And if your family's like mine, they want a lot of time. So if you're stressed and you can't cope, and, you know, you've got to be able to deal with that. And, and I think it's really important for, for us to get to a point where we can deal with stress as leaders and, and business owners. Or if we're in the corp, I remember being in the corporate world and really struggling with those stress levels. Yeah. And, you know, same question, why am I doing this? And at 20 and 30, you can probably, most of us can probably do it. Our bodies are younger, our hearts are younger. But once you get a little bit older, you've really got to start to look after yourself. And leadership is stressful. I think most of us would agree that at times it can be very, very hard on us. So you've got to have that kind of way of dealing with it. But being calm is always the hardest for me. Yeah, yep. Yeah, cool. I mean, you're right. I mean, it is a very stressful time. People are wanting times. And then people are trying to go home to be the dad, the mum, the partner, the husband, the wife, um, brother, sister. And, you know, they go home grumpy sometimes and it's very hard. And and so it's about learning how to be able to have those kind of things. And I think the other thing too, Mark, is the ability to say no at times is pretty interesting because for a lot of us, we're expected to say yes, yes, yes. As you said, people are coming to us all the time to want that answer. In fact, as you said, they already have the answer. They just want to sometimes come and get the reassurance that they're, that they're, what they're doing is all is all good. But uh, yeah, sometimes saying no is really interesting. It's a good word, no. Yep, it is. All right. So the question here is for you to start thinking about and getting that crystal ball out. And if I was asked, Mark, hey, where do you see leadership being in five years? What do you think? Look, I think it comes down to where we are in the world as well you know, how, how, how the world is and, and where we're at. And hopefully we're, you know, we're way past all of this. But I think as far as leaders go, we're going to need to continue to become more approachable with our staff. We're going to continue to have to learn to listen rather than speak, both mm. to our staff and our customers. Our customers look to us as a leader of a brand. They know that there are people behind the brand, unless you're Coca-Cola, but most of us that are not in that top of that corporate world, they know the business owners. I think we've got to continue to, to grow. We've got to grow ourselves personally as well. But I think in five years' time, we are going to see, I mean, in New Zealand in particular, we're seeing so many more women in business and so many more women in, in you know, high-profile CEO roles and, you know, right throughout our health system, throughout all of our private companies, and it's really going to be good to have a, a much more mixed gender at the table. And, you know, like 50% of my staff are female, and, and it's fantastic. I like having their input. They think differently to, to us boys, to us men. So I think we're going to see a lot more uh, women in high-profile jobs, and, and I can't wait for that because they'll bring a different rationale to how we do things and, and team. I think from a, I mean, I've got a lot of friends that are still very high up in the corporate world. Leadership now is about being able to deal or, or run your business, not necessarily in a shared space, but an online space. So I think that's going to become the new norm. And so we're going to have to learn to lead from what I would call afar. 
We're not going to be able to call our team into a room and have a team meeting. We're going to have to be able to lead from afar. So I think as leaders, we're going to have to be able to deliver what we want to achieve online and be believable. And that's a little bit harder, Dennis. I don't particularly like online. I want to be face to face with people, you know, and, and so I think we're going to have to, that's where I see leadership in five years. I think in New Zealand in particular, we're going to see a lot more younger people in business. Two, two kids at university at the moment, they're not interested in being employees. They want to be entrepreneurs and business owners. They may go and work for people. So I think we're going to see a lot more younger leaders. The opportunity, you know, now that everything is so much more international is, is, is fantastic for a little company down the bottom of the world. But as leaders, we're going to have to be more engaging. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, listeners, uh, we've uh, had Mark Trafford here on the show today. And Mark, thank you for joining us on today's show. If our listeners are wanting to get hold of you, where should they go? They can have a look at our networking business. That's tng.org.nz. Love to hear from you. Drop me an a email if you want, mark at tng.org.nz. Or you can find me on LinkedIn, Mark Trafford. Excellent. Uh, Mark, thank you once again for being on today's show. Really, really, it's really been a pleasure. Dennis, thank you so much. I've enjoyed your company. Awesome. Hey, listeners, what we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and the unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Hey, look out for the episodes as they've been released. Download them, have a listen, put a review and a rating. If you uh, Feel free to share them with your friends, your family, your network. If there's any feedback you'd like to give me on the show, or if there's a question for my guests as I interview them, or if you have a question for the Ask Dennis episode, the freestyle episode, feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. Hey, listeners, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.